I had no association with white folks except that uh, uh, the world, uh, so far as social activities are concerned, they used to regard themselves as little New York, <laughs> with, with Lynchburg not far behind. <laughs> uh, of course, they, they, they had a slogan in Rome back in those days called Little Acorns to Great Oak, Watch the Rome Oak. But I, well, you know, back in those days, you had a whole lot of uh, traveling salesmen. Yes. And they had practice of you know, go to one house and, and then. Of course, white folks didn't never call Negro ladies Mrs. And uh, they'd always ask who lived next door. And then you get that, they, they would get, they, Miss Pentecost's first name was Livia. Well, when they came there to start off, they wanted to know Livia. Yeah. I answered the door, not, no, not to you, close the door. Yeah, but uh, Miss Pentecost answers <laughs> the same thing. But anyway, they finally learned that if they won't come in the business there at the room at Pentecost house, they came in and asked for Mrs. Pentecost, and they took a hat off when they came in the house. <laughs> and, and so we, as I say, I had plenty of, built up plenty of steam by virtue of the fact that they had plenty of steam. Yes. And, uh, That's and, wonderful that she did that. Yeah. And, yes. And, uh, and of course, I started playing tennis when I was nine years old. <laughs> we had a tennis court in that just next next block. Oh. Uh, and, uh, and then later on, a man gave gave uh, Bellman, uh, he gave uh, had a lot up on Wells Avenue. That was the third third Avenue. We I lived on fourth. And he told us if we uh, fix it up, he, he he let us use it. And so we we we. We fixed it up for a tennis court and wired it up, marked it up and everything. And then we had six of us, and, and uh, then we, we located six girls, called ourselves the Puff Adders. <laughs> 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 that sounds, well, it sounds as if your community in Roanoke was self-contained self and self-sufficient. Yeah, it was. Was it comprised of many different economical levels of African Americans? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. See, see the, most of the people, most of our friends were, worked, worked for waiters and cooks. Mr. Spinnacles was a chef cook. He, he had been recruited by the president of, of North and Western to, to upgrade the service of the North and Western dining car service. And, and, uh, uh, and he was an excellent cook. Uh, and, uh, and they had a man named Woodliff that brought him along too. Uh, he, he was he, he was a waiter, but the uh, uh, funny part, his daughter's still living, and she's one year older than I. <laughs> we were at a Fantastic. Meal. We were we were, we were at a, they had a celebration of me over over Rome several years ago, and uh, somebody oh I said you know my. One of my classmates still here. She's little. She's quite young though. And then she said, "Huh, I'm older than he is. I'm getting yeah, older than he is." <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were both both by, you know, in our nineties by that time though. Uh, but, Mr. Uh, Hill, when yeah, but, but, uh, I'm sorry, uh, but I also uh, the other thing. See, we didn't believe in buying things on credit. If you want to buy, you want to get something, you save your money. And, Went down and bought it, and uh, I wanted a bicycle. <laughs> and Miss, they, well, what you when you gonna what you gonna do to get it? So I, I said, well, I, I get the bicycle. I can have a newspaper route. And, okay, so I developed the Sunday morning newspaper route. Not 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 for I didn't carry the newspapers for the company. I mean, I had an independent route. And uh, that was during the war, and I used to get up at three o'clock in the morning on Sundays, and go down to the newspaper place to get my papers as they come off the press. See, read all about it, <laughs> hear about this and hear about that, uh, and, and, and in the white neighborhoods, go see every now and then some white boys would come up, and I had to run like hell, but other than that, <laughs> uh, I did very well. 
But, but the only, only contact I had with white folk was, was every now and then we'd, we'd meet at the edge of one of the neighborhoods and throw rocks at each other. I remember on one occasion, a little white boy came through to give him Avenue on a bicycle. I ran out the street and grabbed him, pushed him off his bicycle, slapped him. <laughs> and, and we riding through our, our neighborhood. Uh, I must be about 11 or 12 years old by that time. So he had crossed the line. Yeah, he yes. well, they, 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 they were, we, we came through a white neighborhood. We had to run or uh, uh, go around and see how. Uh, uh, I was in what was known as a troublesome class, I guess I call it. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a large class, 30, 30 students. And uh, they transferred us from north, northwest to a school down northeast to a strong teacher. Miss Sarah Brown, and uh, we we had to we walk we would walk around the neighbor, white neighborhood to go down to school. Except every time then, every now and then, I was late, and I'd, I'd gamble and run through the, go through the neighborhood. But by that time, all all the kids were at school, so I never had to, never had any trouble. I see. But, Only because they were in school, but yeah. you were able to get oh, through yeah, well, without. I, I knew they'd be in school. So. <laughs>